How are we doing guys? Today I'm going to show you what a big day on the farm is. How are we doing guys? Today I'm going to show you what a big day on the farm is. By big day it means I don't know when I'm going to get to sleep tonight. So I'm about an hour away from home and we took the 8370 with the 2270 XD Massey Large Square Baler and the guys I'm baling for don't really do iPhones and all that so I was getting the, you know, it's south of this on the east side of this landmark and I'm like yeah, south and east, yeah that's, that's nice, you know, do you have an address? But uh, we managed to find it. Uh, I could tell because it was ready for me when we got here. And I'm gonna be making three by four by roughly sixes. Um, the reason we're not going the full eight foot length is because we have to wrap it later tonight. And uh, the wrapper tolerates the six foot length a whole lot better than eight. I actually don't even know if it do full eight. Well, it'll do our bundles, but it just, it increases operator comfort. And uh, you start to pack a lot of weight in these things if you get to a full eight feet. So we're at six. And uh, we'll see how this goes. I have to punch this to constant because I need constant flow to be able to put my chute down in the back and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So, and what have you to avoid tail swing and stuff? We have to put this back gate up. It saves us, geez, I don't know, it's gotta save us five or six feet on the back end. So the chains are done. Take this little button right here. Check the cylinder. And we are going down. Looks good to me. Got our strings in there. Uh, pretty clean. So this is a thousand PTO machine. So we'll find our engine here. Pick up right there. So that puppy's on the ground. I already checked twine. We got the preservative ready. I got it roughly where I want it. Three points up in the air. So we'll pop the PTO on. It starts hard. These balers really take a lot of power. Throttle is virtually maxed out. I mean, these balers take some real power. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down and try to get adjusted, and, and when I get rolling a little bit, I'll turn it on, but I can't afford to screw this up right away. And I especially can't afford to screw it up when I'm right by a major highway up there. That'd be too embarrassing. Alrighty, guys, I think it's about time we uh, throw the drone up. Uh, the regrowth on the ground is actually too tall to get the drone to take off, so I positioned a nice landing spot right in the front of the tractor. And who knows how this is going to go. I'm alone. No one's here to fly it. So I'm just going to kind of put it in a corner of the field. And you can watch me clean this one up. And I'm on my last two little pieces. I've been to three different locations today. And I drove right through the middle of a town, which was a disaster. But I, I made it here and I'm about done. So hopefully we can do a cool time lapse in the air. And I'll show you a little bit about what I'm doing in the cab. Oh, yeah. So these one rows are fairly big. I think they couple four together. So there's a lot of volume going through. I'm uh, able to run right about six and a half miles an hour. I'm trying to get that ideal dream world two and a quarter inch to three inch flake in each bale. That's uh, industry standard. That makes a really nice bale. They come out pretty square. And uh, I'm having a good time. I, I really like running this large square bale. It really gets stuff done. I, I think I've done like 70 acres in a couple hours with more road time than actually baling. I mean, 70 acres with four small square balers is a really nice day, and this is, makes it look like nothing. Uh, this hay will be wrapped. It's right around the 35 to 40% mark, so it's actually pretty good. It, 
tad dry, but it should inside and the cow should love it. Sweet feed, it's nice grass. But as far as what the operator is looking for, I uh, I'm just trying to make sure that my load sense stays relatively even. So I'm spitting out a bale that's squared off on both edges and it just makes it easier to load. Um, behind me, I will try to turn around. So see those on the top of the baler there, those are bouncing. Well, the one's not, but that's because it just tied off a bale, so it probably doesn't have pressure yet. But when those are bouncing, that's a good sign. That means that the string successfully tied off on the last bale, and now you have the plunger slamming flakes up against the string again and uh, doing what it's supposed to do. The string's catching the flakes, and then eventually it'll get to make it about a six foot bale, so we're able to wrap these. So it'll get to about 72 inches, give or take, and tie off. And that's how I know the machine's working. I got the applicator on. We are good to go. What I absolutely love about this baler is the steerable rear axle. It's hydraulic driven and it just helps me turn into windrows so much nicer. Uh, if I didn't have that, I think I'd be having to skip two or three windrows and be working myself in a, just working myself in bigger circles and I would spend a lot more time traveling the headlands. This one I can just rip right back into the, the next section and it makes it great. I'm not turfing up the field or anything. I, I think that, that for whatever reason, if you're considering buying one of these machines, I would definitely get, first of all, I would definitely get two axles because this thing is very heavy, especially when you're spitting out uh, nearly one ton silage bales out of the back. And two, the steerable rear axle just makes it very nice. So I guess for the sake of full transparency and or just being a true inlet to Farming Insider, uh, what I did before I actually left this field is I got a tally on the total bales here and I called the truckers and let them know, hey, in this particular batch right here, there's 110 bales. So that gives them the, that gives them the ability to say, hey, I need X amount of trucks. And that's just what a good baler guy does, you know? Not everyone would throw that number out there. Not everyone would keep, or keep track, but that is something that I do. This is important. You gotta keep your truckers happy with you. You send them to a field and they didn't need to be there, and they could've went home to their wives and children and fantasy football or Tuesday night wrestling, they're pretty pissed at you. Look at that. Not bad. Nice looking hay too. Nice dense sides. Can't even begin to even try to get your finger in there. We got the load turned way up, man. Decent looking hay. Really not bad for uh, late June in, in Ohio. Pretty good color. It's time to take the puppy home. It's about an hour drive back, well, by car, so give me, I go 34 miles an hour when I can, when I feel in control, so give me hour 25, hour and a half, you know. Well, she made it back in one piece. 
not the full trip. We came and uh, made a pit stop at the Spencer farm because we decided we have, we're bailing about half of this tomorrow. You can maybe see where it's starting to dry and then up on the hill. And we have a piece back there that has some volunteer wheat coming up in it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and large square it and try to find a cattle guy or it's still nice hay, maybe even a horse customer that wants a discount. I don't don't fact check me there. I, I have no idea if horses can tolerate some volunteer uh, wheat. I don't know if I said wheat before, it's wheat, not rye. Volunteer wheat in the hay, uh, we'll see. We got the large square park next to, we're getting moved in. One small square, two back there, three. We got two of the mowers here. Oh, it's lining up. And we have some people picking blueberries, actually. I don't want to head over there. And, oh, well, there's the bees. Should probably keep my distance. We have some blueberry pickers over here. Planters, tedders. It's just so much junk laying around. A lot of people have been asking, so here's part of the patch. To, Ignore the tree, didn't get hedged. So this particular variety, I'll be honest, I'd have to look at the spreadsheet to know. Uh, it's not quite ready. It is June 24th, maybe, I think. And the Dukes are in full swing. They're farther up there. That's where you'll, where you'll see the people. But occasionally you can catch a kid running around and it probably means I really shouldn't be filming a kid. So I'm gonna take the camera this way. <laughs> There's some of the blueberry patrons there. Opening day, very exciting. Went and ate some dinner, and the bales are lined up for us, ready to be wrapped. Pretty nice looking beans too, huh, Dad? Yeah, they are. Well, I don't have a ton of room to get to that bale, so I backed up down the driveway here and see if we can get unfolded and Squeeze in there. If not, the telehandler's ready to go. <laughs> Move it for me. Uh, I guarantee it's gonna chirp at me. It's chirping. Oh man. There we go. Look at that. So here's what I gotta do. I, I am not quite putting ten wraps on. I'm gonna put eight wraps on. So man, we gotta go all over the place. Not doing ten wraps. We're gonna do eight. Okay. Eight's good. So there's that. Changed it to eight right there. We are not doing round bales either. We're doing square bales. Perfect. And they are not 80 by 90s. These are three by fours. So these are 90 by 120s. 120 by 120 by 90. Pop it in good. Okay. What we have to do is we have to unfold this puppy first. So I'll at least give it some juice here. Hydraulic one, and what I want to do is I want to creep forward a little bit. One C. There we go. We're unfolded. Now what I have to do is I have to calibrate the RPMs I need to run at to make sure this machine operates efficiently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calibrate there at 79 and an idle for the large squares on the bottom. So I gotta bump up the throttle. To about 100. There we go, cool. We'll see what we can do. Okay, so we got it dialed in. I had to work out a few issues. We have telehandler unloading, I believe the last semi over there. There's, there's more bales on the other side of the barn. But we got this puppy working good enough. Got eight wraps going around him. I had to dial on my three-point arm a little bit, uh, but now we're, now we're set. Now we're really killing it. It'd be a long night. It takes a lot of fine-tuned movement. And it can be, it can be fairly aggravating, <laughs> in all honesty. You have to, with these larger three-by-fours, you pretty much have to position the bale exactly exactly how you want it. They're six, six and a half feet long, but there's just no room to cheat. Uh-oh, hope someone's okay. And if the ground is not perfectly flat, I run into a lot of issues with them wanting to walk forward or backwards.
but you get the gist of it. That's uh, what we're trying to do there. Then I just back it up, try to get it out of my way, find a nice spot to drop it. See if we can go grab the next one, get two in a row, nice and the way it's supposed to work, I should say. The problem I have with this tractor is when I'm in uneven ground, I should be able to just adjust the three-point arms. And I have to turn on that little button, which pulls all the power from the three-point arms, and throws it to the hydraulic so that we have enough power to even run the rapid. So I'm, I'm kind of working with a little bit of a handicap here. But we're getting done. We're making do. There we go. Voila. Just how we want it. Set it down. On to the next one. I caught the trucks. Tell him was absolutely handling them. Got a very nice looking stack here. Beautiful. Waiting on the last truck. Just pulled in. I took a short break to eat. And he's just unstacking them so the trucker can go home and then I'll line them up for me and that's all there is to it. That's all she said. And that's it, done wrapping by about 11.30. Not a bad night. This is a big day in the farming community. Get up at 6.30, load straw, bale and wrap it, and be done before midnight. Thank you guys for tuning in, bye.